These are six of the most hated OF creators on the internet. However, if you flip them upside down, you'll find another set of OF creators who are actually loved. My name's Ryan, and we're going to be comparing some of the most loved OF creators with some of the most hated, starting with Sophie Rain. Sophie Rain is a popular TikToker and OnlyFriends creator, known for her suggestive videos to attract her audience to her OnlyFiends page. That said, given that most TikTok users are young, it calls into question her decision to post things like this. But instead of targeting adults, Sophie leaned more towards her young audience and tried to attract them even more by wearing skin-tight Spider-Man costumes, which went viral on social media. Her whole Twitter feed is full of suggestive content, and even more cosplays of herself as Spider-Man. Absolutely fame-hungry, the sheer amount of promo she has going on in Twitter alone is off the scale. She took this a step further in February of 2024 by making an explicit Spider-Man cosplay video on her OF page. fatherless behavior. She makes posts like, if you're online on X, DM me for a photo. A lot of kids will DM her and she will not care if it's a kid, she will send it. She sells only to little kids. My little brother, bro, he's off to her only How she feel about that? I felt hurt. I felt her. She's ruining a whole generation. While Sophie Rain was met with harsh criticism for OnlyFiends, the next person on this list actually gained the respect of their audience. Markiplier is widely regarded as being the most down-to-earth, wholesome, and kind-hearted YouTubers of all time. On October 17th, 2022, Mark made an announcement that he would start an OF page for charity if his viewers listened to his podcasts and launched them to the top of Apple and Spotify podcast charts. The fact that he knows how horny the internet is and he's using that to get money for charity is why I love him. And just in a couple of months, he delivered his promise. My only f is now available through the link in the description below. As promised, three drops of tasteful is now available for purchase, the proceeds of which will all be going to charity. They'll be split evenly between the Cincinnati Children's Hospital in my hometown of Cincinnati and the World Food Program, because if you're going to quench your thirst, we might as well try to feed some people. All proceeds will be donated to the Cincinnati Children's Hospital and the World Food Program, and the public reaction was overwhelmingly positive. The huge amount of traffic even caused OF servers to crash. Only Markiplier could break the internet in such a wholesome way. Estimates suggest that he's raised well over $363,000 for charity, all through his only friend's account. Markiplier is a W for donating the money he's making, really shows how kind he is. While Markiplier remains focused on helping people and giving back, the next person on her list would rather take advantage of minors for profit. McKinley Richardson is a well-known social media personality who got popular for being the girlfriend of Jack Doherty and how far she will go to promote her OF. For instance, she came under fire by the internet after she started making videos with 11-year-old influencer baby Gronk where she asks him clearly inappropriate questions. Would you rather have this girl or this Uris? I'm taking that Uris. Uris? Yep. All right. <laughs> Would you rather have this girl or this McLaren? McLaren. Oh, okay. All right, mom. Sorry. All right. Would you rather have this girl or this blue Lambo? Lambo. Still? Still? Not good enough for you? No. Oh my gosh. How is this legal? Exactly, he's 11 advertising in OnlyFiends. Imagine if a male prawn star made a collab with an 11 year old girl. Another post shows her absolute brain rot questions to Baby Gronk about his quote, Riz. All right, Baby Gronk, who has more Riz? Is you or Blue Tie? Who's Blue Tie? Who is Blue Tie? That's what I'm saying. I have no idea who Blue Tie is, I don't get it. Is that more Riz? Is that more Riz, yeah. Comments, who has more Riz? This is so wrong, honestly. Why the F is a fourth grader with an OF girl? This sort of content has led to her being called a PDF file and a g by the internet. This is definitely some PDF file stuff, asking an 11 year old stuff like that. And yet she gets away with it because double standards, I guess. The double standards of women who groom young men and the incels who accept slash envy it is just disturbing and gross. Where is child protective services when you need them? Unlike McKinley, whose fans have completely lost respect for her, the next person on her list, managed to stage a huge comeback and regain the internet's admiration. Nikocado Avocado is a popular YouTuber known for his extreme eating challenges and mukbang videos on YouTube, which led to intense backlash and heat from the internet, calling him out for his unhealthy lifestyle. But what many people might not know about him is that he is also in the top 0.14% of OF creators. Several YouTubers have tried subscribing to see what Nikocado actually posts there, and to say that they were shocked by what they found is an understatement. Oh my god, it, it looks like a shrunken shy guy. <coughs> <coughs> This is the first one about his fucking 
Dude, wanna pound my fat ass? No. God, no. Eat it. <coughs> What's worse is that people actually buy his OF for pleasure. Despite all the hate Nick Okada was getting for being overweight and unhealthy, little did the internet know that Nick Okada would be the one who gets the last laugh, as he posted a video on September 7, 2024 that resulted in him becoming one of the most inspiring OF creators. Unironically, this is probably one of, if not the biggest plot twists in the history of YouTube. Two steps ahead. I am always two steps ahead. This has been the greatest social experiment of my entire life. So I am the villain because I've made myself one. Today I woke up from a very long dream and I also woke up having lost 250 pounds off of my body. This video stunned his fans and haters alike, leaving them speechless and overturning the public opinion back in favor of him. Losing 250 pounds is an unbelievable feat that's nothing shy of extraordinary. And he mentions how even yesterday, YouTubers and many other people were calling him sad, fat, depressing, sick, and all of that, and still making videos about him, even while he secretly, over the course of two years, had been losing all of that weight, and all the videos that people were talking about were actually videos that Nick Okado had filmed two years prior. Nico woke up and literally said, let's prove everyone wrong, and actually did it. What a legend. I went from being disgusted by Nick to downright being inspired by Nick. That's seriously one hell of a transformation. This man is an actual genius. Dude wrote, directed, and starred in his own anime, and we've just experienced the pinnacle of the whole Nick Okado saga. Absolute madman. Where Nick Okado took a step in the right direction, the next influencer kept sliding downhill with her reckless OF promotion. Natalie Reynolds is a kick streamer, TikToker, and yet another OF creator, known for being formally involved with Jack Doherty, and it's proved that she'll do just about anything for money. She has one of the worst track records in the history of OF girls, starting with doing inappropriate things to make people uncomfortable. Did you take pictures of my ass quick? For what? My ass. Picture of your ass. Yeah. For? Uh, just a post. Could, could you be in the picture? What part of this is funny? He was with his wife. I can't imagine how uncomfortable he felt. She also went to the gym naked with painted pants. If you don't have clothes on, you need to be out of here, man. I do have clothes on. That's funny. Go closer. How's the body That is body I work in the industry enough to know. I work in the entertainment field. He's saying you need to leave. He's not a No, no, report you for a Report me. I mean, she's covered. And even expose herself inappropriately in public. <laughs> and even to children. The OnlyFiends girls are just ruining those kids who's watching, and I think YouTube needs to ban them for promoting prawn to kids. But what really sets Natalie apart is her extreme stupidity, like the time she pretended to kidnap children as a prank and then fake getting arrested just for views. Kids, don't go, don't go to the sign that, the, like the van that says that they're giving out free candy. Like everyone's heard that stereotype before, and the parents always say to watch out for the white van with free candy on it. So I'm literally doing a social experiment today on little kids and being kind of creepy. They need to get arrested. I'm so sick of these YouTubers, TikTokers messing with strangers for views. Go get a job. Can we stop calling sociopaths and narcissists with the camera influencers? Natalie seems to have an endless list of questionable behavior. Natalie Reynolds sh her camera in the eye with a paintball gun, dresses up as a kid with cupcakes to attract offenders, scammed her audience over crypto, mocked a homeless man on her live stream, and did something incredibly down bad with a doll on stream. What? What the f But perhaps her biggest controversy was when she nearly killed a disabled woman on stream by paying her to jump into dangerous waters despite knowing that she can't swim. You should what? jump in the water to find it for me. Well, why don't you jump in with me? I'll give you 20 bucks. 20 bucks? Yeah, that's a, that's a, a W, uh, no, that's a good deal. 20 bucks? Five. Yeah, so you go in. No, you gotta go in. You go me. in, you try to find the scanner. You're gonna jump in with me. I'll jump in after you. What? She's like, right? No. No. All right. <laughs> I was, you know why I wasn't going to? Because my shoes, my feet were getting You should high. just jump in right now. But I'm gonna jump in with my shoes on. Okay. Ready? Yeah, ready? Oh! Wait, what? 
She even gestured to fake push the poor lady into the water. There's a special place in hell to put all the kick streams in. And when it became clear that the woman was in trouble, she and her crew just laughed and fled the scene. I can't swim! I can only float! Oh, she she might literally die. Just... No, stop! Seriously, don't stop! Please, you're actually freaking me out! No, please! Please, don't... No, please, she's floating! <laughs> You can really see the concern wash over each of their smiling faces as they're confronted with the very real possibility that that woman might drown and die because of the streamer's actions. I really wish this streamer had stuck with her only f as opposed to trying to pivot her career into just being an absolute insufferable piece of She is just a piece of She actually would have that woman if there weren't others around to call 911. That's unfathomable to me. Not only did she not do anything to help, but the dudes that are with her did nothing to help. All they did was laugh at the situation where someone's life was actually in danger. That's so f***ed up. That is, I did not know she was mentally ill. I thought she was just trying to have fun. I thought she was drunk or something. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Of course this happens like what, 30 minutes in my stream? Like, I spent time to convincing someone to jump. See, now she's just floating in the water. I think she's on drugs. A high school bully that never grew up. Such a shame. She literally admitted to trying to kill a drunk woman. She said she didn't know that she was mentally ill and assumed she was drunk. Vocalizing how inconvenienced you are at someone's near death is a wild level of apathy. Unlike people like Natalie who would sell their soul if it meant getting more OF subscribers, the next person decided to make an OF page as a joke and soon came to regret it. Ben of the Week is a comedy TikToker and YouTuber who pranked his entire fan base in December of 2022 by starting an OnlyFriends account. See, the goal is to scam all the freaks that want to see my peeper, but how do you do that? How is that legally possible? Well, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, want to see a picture of my c when it's just a c but what his subscribers didn't realize was that Ben had no intentions of actually showing his private images to anyone on the internet. Ben, due to his good nature, gave away all the OF earnings to charity. I will send out a message to all of my only f***ing saying, What you've been waiting for, my c*** fully out and me kissing it. <laughs> Which is not a lie! That's, that's factually true. Ben, due to his good nature, gave away all the OF earnings to charity. It's going to charity. Yeah, the 10 billion dollars that we're gonna make are all gonna go to the Humane Society of Canada. Catching weirdos in the act and donating the money to charity, this guy's a real one. However, the people who had paid for his OF weren't pleased to see the big reveal, resulting in them sending Ben threats. One of the subscribers even turned out to be his manager from back when he was 17. This mother this mother is from my hometown. What the f Seeing this, his fans came together to support him and express their concerns about the creepy messages. Manager was effing disgusting. Hope you're okay, Ben. Ben, are you okay? This seemed like a genuinely haunting experience. I actually feel sorry for you, Ben. You're such a funny and amazing person and this experience must have been a lot for you. Me and lots of other people who genuinely like you for your personality are here for you. However, while Ben made an OF account as a lighthearted joke, the next degenerate person started her OF career in a desperate attempt to capitalize on her popularity. Camilo Araujo rose to fame after participating in Mr. Beast's Squid Game video as contestant number 67, where she immediately captured the attention of the audience for her good looks. Yo Twitter, y'all gotta find player 67 at from Mr. Beast Squid Games for me. As her followers on social media skyrocketed, she decided to take advantage of her popularity by starting an OF page. I lost $456,000 in Mr. Beast Squid Game video, and I've been trying to make the money back ever since. But I don't need to win a Mr. Beast challenge to make half a million dollars, and I'm gonna prove it right now. I was running out of ideas. I'm just gonna start no offense. Mr. Beast took in the wrong person. Losing a competition made you sell your body? Funniest concept ever heard. I failed in life so I'ma be an online pro- on social media, she had been making content geared towards kids and openly acknowledged her fan base. Her short titled, My Biggest Fan Takes Me Shopping, features a literal child. But then she went ahead and posted videos talking about her OF scenes in detail to promote it on the same platforms where she has kids as her audience. Where we had that like three on three set where you had to like hold my leg because I couldn't hold it up myself for the video and you were holding it up. Do you remember that? Yeah. And then that bathtub scene. Oh yeah. 
don't want to say that on the internet. Well, babe, it's posted. It's okay. It's horrendous that a spicy creator is influencing children like this. But she wasn't satisfied with the attention she was getting and wanted even more. She achieved this by making herself controversial to get more views, and she created a new meta on August 17th, 2023, when she used her little brother for her OnlyFriends promotion. Now, this is weird AF. Why are you doing a promo with your little brother? Seems kind of predatory. You're effing disgusting. I would hate you if I was related to you. This publicity stunt by involving her underage brother absolutely ruined what little respect her fans had left for her. Weird to use a kid, your own brother, to promote your only friends and then have him say something about your p***y. Or, or rather, his friends say something about your p***y. It's so gross. I actually feel really bad for the kid here because I do think there absolutely is some level of bullying that's probably happened to him as a result of that video blowing up and it's not like he wanted to be the marketing mascot for his sister's only f content. I don't know who could ever think it's a good idea to have a child advertise for them. Like there's no way that's legal. That that's got that's probably like actually a crime. That that's probably illegal. Because of the controversy getting her more attention, she started bringing in more family members on camera and talking about extremely inappropriate things. But then t things take like a very sinister insane turn. Good 15 minutes of me, what would you do? Always been curious what it'd be like to be with a woman. Good 15 minutes of me, what would you do? Well, you know, uh... And then she also has one where she does kiss or slap game with grandmammy. Old Meemaw, would you rather kiss or slap her granddaughter's ass? It's so f***ed up. Imagine an adult guy does that to his little sister. Why is she not being arrested and prosecuted for such disgusting and gross behavior? She thought it was only families. While OF was a quick money-making tactic for someone like Camilla, the next person used it as a means to support the projects they're passionate about. Crank Gameplays, whose real name is Ethan Nestor, is an American YouTuber, video game commentator, and vlogger known for his collabs with Markiplier. On July 22nd, 2023, he shocked his followers by posting a video revealing that he started an OnlyFans, where he talked about an upcoming documentary that he's creating. But here's the thing about documentaries. Here's the thing about movies in general and making them. It's really expensive. Really, really expensive. Get the sound done for it by professionals. We gotta get it professionally colored. We have to get a score created. And all that costs tens upon tens upon tens of thousands of dollars. And so for the first time, I am asking I suppose, to see if you guys would like to pitch in and help out and help with uh, the creation of this documentary. And his community was extremely supportive of him. Only Ethan could get me to watch a man give a TED talk on a toilet at 9am. Bro filmed himself it for nearly 7 minutes with full confidence. Incredible. Now Ethan's distasteful for profit is a cause I can truly get behind. Sir, you are nuts and you have my full respect and admiration. Exaggerated videos and stage clips are the bread and butter of all of girls, but the next person on this list takes the crown as Twitch's biggest fraud. Amaranth is a Twitch streamer and top OF creator, known for her ASMR and hot tip streams on Twitch, pushing the boundaries of how much n***y is allowed on the platform. However, things would soon take a dark turn in October of 2022, when Amaranth revealed on stream that she was in an abuse relationship with her husband, who is forcing her to make adult content and hide her marriage to earn more money, while she herself would rather be broke than keep making content like that. I'm gonna burn that all to the ground because you're a f***ing sure whine about it. I'm gonna do a f***ing whore. I'd rather be broke again than deal with this she gained the hearts of millions after publicly revealing her struggles, and big creators like Ludwig and Penguin Zero made videos to show their support. The point of this video is for me to show support to Amaranth, a victim of domestic abuse, and I'm hoping to show you why I, you should also support Amaranth as a victim. But I think this is an extremely important situation to talk about. Like, this is a legitimate case of abuse on stream here. Eventually, Amaranth announced that she'd left her abusive husband and now that she's free to do whatever she wants. Cleavage every day. I can wear clothes. All the events leading up to this gave the impression that Amaranth herself didn't want to second herself online for money, and now that she was completely free, surely she would change up the type of content she was making, right? She went back to the only back to the topless sort of streams, the hot tub sort of streams, and she pushed it a little too far. She joined the censor bar meta on Twitch. One of the reasons people really hate this sort of stuff is because it is pet 
public by nature because Twitch is a 13 plus website and majority of the users on Twitch are under 18. Wasn't she the one saying she was forced to do this and she didn't want to do it anymore? There's so much going on it's hard to keep track. Anything for clout I guess, and money. I'll be honest, after I saw everything from her and the pictures that were posted, I felt for her and hoped she would stop this, be a normal streamer and happy. Now she's just tripling down at being an object. No respect for her. I'd respect her doing what she's doing now a lot more if she didn't lie about it and just said, yeah I like showing my body off for money and attention. While Amaranth played with her audience's feelings, the next person delivered exactly what they promised in their content. Linus Tech Tips is a very popular tech YouTuber with almost 16 million subscribers. But on April 1st, 2021, Linus created an OnlyFiends account as an April Fool's joke. You are exactly the kind of person that I'd like to personally invite to witness a stiff new direction for our company. That's right, we're coming to OnlyFiends. And you'll get instant access to an exclusive feed of videos and stills featuring the hottest hardware like you've never seen it before. We've got all the best categories. You want the s**tiest MILFs? You'll find them here. I wouldn't mind flashing that motherboard, if you know what I'm saying. Memory you'll never forget. These hard drives won't keep your secrets. And our thermal camera shots are too hot for YouTube monetization. And we're not finished yet. We'll be doing exclusive, not safe for work teardowns, ASMR build guides. It'll be a tight fit, but we can make it work. And all with no protection. This is the best April 1st video I've ever seen. Never watched a Linus Tech Tips video in such levels of fear of my wife walking in at the wrong moment. His idea was basically to make funny, sexualized content that is actually about computer parts. You know, lol, we should do this, like, we should pretend we have an only Haha, <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't it be funny if we talked about, like, you know, foot fetish, but it was computer feet, like, kind of like a fun tech spin on, uh, you know, a lot of really popular genres on only and among adult performers and the audiences that enjoy that type of content. And once people actually started flocking to his OF, he was absolutely shocked. And they were like, hey, so you know we've made like $6,000 already, right? And I was like, shut the front door. Are you, <laughs> are you kidding me right now? Because that was not the intent at all. Like, I didn't expect anyone to actually subscribe to it. If you subscribe to it, a spoiler alert, guys, like, you're not supposed to. Spoiler alert, <laughs> you, get, you get an automatic image that gets sent to you that just says, why? <laughs> 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 The account did so well that it earned around $15,000 and was placed in the top 1% of OF creators and it stayed up for a few days before Linus put an end to the joke. I subscribed with the intention of it being a funny donation, no regrets whatsoever. Linus tips.